Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Hidalgo. I'm the Principal Reliability Advocate at Noble Nye, and my career has been pretty much focused on SLOs for the last five or six years. And today, I want to talk to you a little bit about how SLOs are really for everyone. And I want to do that by telling you a story. So let's go back in time, all the way back to November of 2003. At the time, I was working in a restaurant. We were a fairly popular restaurant. We were often busy, especially on weekends. And restaurant work is really difficult, um, especially at a busy restaurant where you are entirely booked and you're turning over all your tables multiple times per day. I've talked to other people in the computer industry who used to work in restaurants, and they all agree that it's like managing an incident every night. You need a hierarchy. You need a common communication scheme. You need to make sure everyone's on the same page or stuff isn't going to work out well for you. And the reason I wanted to go back to this specific time is because, well, things just weren't going that great. We had a lot of unhappy customers. We had kind of gotten unsynced. The servers were not communicating well with each other, and we're not communicating well with the kitchen, and the kitchen was not communicating well back to the servers, and a lot of things just got kind of disjointed, and we had a lot of unhappy customers, and tips were going down, and we weren't exactly sure how to address this, but this is, of course, incredibly important because unhappy customers will kill your business. This is true of any business. If people aren't satisfied with the service that you're providing them, they're going to go elsewhere. So we got together and we said, look, let's set measurable targets for our levels of service so we don't burn out, but still keep people happy. We couldn't just keep working harder and harder. There was clearly something else at play here. We weren't sure exactly where the problems were, although obviously there were problems. So we set a few measurable goals. And to be honest, I don't remember exactly what these numbers were, but we did do things like start to think about how often it would take for us to greet a seated table within two minutes. We started trying to keep track of how long it would take for drinks to be delivered to someone who just sat down. And maybe we wanted to ensure that appetizers made it out of the kitchen within 10 minutes of them being ordered. Again, I don't remember exactly what these numbers were, but these were the kind of things we started measuring. We started setting targets for ourselves. And we knew that things weren't going to go perfect. We didn't actually expect every single table that was seated to be greeted within two minutes. But we started thinking about things in terms of four out of five customers will have their drinks delivered to them within five minutes of, of their ordering them and things along those lines. And this helped us identify where the problems actually were. For example, if the drinks were just not making it onto the table in time often enough, we knew perhaps we had to staff another bartender or customers weren't greeted in time, well, we realized we had to retrain the hosts. The hosts were accustomed to seating people uh, just wherever there were open tables. Uh, they would often seat uh, the servers that, that, were, that were known to be you know, harder workers more often, but that wasn't actually efficient for anyone at all. So what we had to do was retrain people and ensure that the hosts were seating people more of a round robin fashion. And by identifying some of this, the service problems improved. We were able to actually specify and identify exactly what we needed to be focused on. And happy customers leads to a happy business. This is again true for any business. It doesn't matter what you're doing or what kind of service you're providing. If people are happy, you're gonna end up with a better running business. So let's go back to this sentence, this, this platitude that we set for ourselves. Let's set measurable targets for our levels of service so we don't burn people out, but still keep people happy. And let's remove some of the words. We can get rid of all of that. So we're just left with targets for our level of service. And then we can rename targets to objectives and take out a few more words and then rearrange everything. And we end up with service level objectives. We were using service level objectives as a restaurant. Way before the term was ever even invented, the way we use it today in the tech world and the site reliability engineering world, because these things just make sense. They're common approaches that just about every business uses to a certain extent. SLOs are for everyone. Because what are SLOs really? 
these are three service reliability principles that I've often talked about over the years, and they're kind of the underpinnings of how service level objectives actually work. The first is that reliability is the most important feature of your service. If your service, whatever it is, whether it's a computer service or something in the service industry or anything in between, if you're not doing what you need to be doing for your customers, you're not being reliable. That means that your users or your customers determine what reliable actually means, not you. You don't get to decide that. You can help guide and you can try to uh, you know, measure the most meaningful metrics and telemetry that you possibly have. But at the end of the day, it's your users, it's your customers that actually determine if you're being reliable or not. And the final point is that nothing works all the time, so don't aim for it. Don't try to ensure that 100% of customers are greeted within two minutes. Just make sure that four out of five are, and you'll probably still end up okay. And this is because SLOs are really just a philosophy. Now, in the computer industry, in the tech industry, for most of the people attending this conference today, there's a lot of math that goes into this. Some of it is very complicated. Some of it is difficult. And this math is very important for the kind of services that we support. But it isn't actually required to apply all the philosophies of an SLO-based approach. And the most important thing is just think about your users. Are you measuring things from their perspective? Are you taking them into account? If you do that, you're basically doing SLOs, and you'll probably end up mostly okay. Thanks. Thank you.